、私は道具だ。小さな国の王女として生まれたことが、私の不幸の始まりだった。すべてが民のため、幼い頃から耳にこびりついている。いまいましい言葉民が憎かったわけではなかったただその言葉の裏に隠された私たちのためという両親の真意が私の心を蝕み続けた<音楽>それでも私が心を保っていられたのは一人の男性を愛していたから彼は似た境遇にある隣国の王子だった私たちは互いを分かち合い深く愛し合っていた私はとても幸せだった Hello, everybody, and welcome to this video looking at Oninaki. This is a demo, it was dropped on us this week by Square Enix, and it is on PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and I believe as of now it's on PC as well. Don't quote me on that if it's not. If it isn't, it's coming soon, but I do believe it is on PC now. So you can go and grab it basically on whatever platform you prefer, and you can give this game a go. This comes to us from Tokyo RPG Factory, it is their third game now. Following on from I Am Setsuna and Lost Sphere. And I wanted to do this video because now that we are three games into it, there's a definite sense that there is a structure and an approach to game development with Tokyo RPG Factory. And I'm not talking just about the gameplay because those comparisons are quite obvious. Although this game is quite different to I Am Setsuna and Lost Sphere, it's、uh, obviously very retro inspired. But that's not what I'm really talking about. What I'm talking about is more the thematic side of things and the philosophical side of things, if you want to call it that. There is definitely a point of similarity between all of Tokyo RPG Factory's games. And I wanted to do this video to talk about it because I do think it's a particularly good thing. I think that one of the reasons that Tokyo RPG Factory is a favorite developer of mine now is because of the way it handles its themes and it does it quite interestingly and it's deep and it's rich and it's basically every,、uh, everything I look for from an RPG. So Oninaki roughly translates into Demon's Tears in English. It's not the perfect translation. There are a couple of different ways you could translate the words, I guess. The Japanese title, which I am not going to attempt to pronounce because I haven't got it here in front of me and I'll probably mess it up, is slightly more clear on it. But in English, Oninaki,、uh, the title that they've chosen for this localized version, is. Yeah, like I said, it, it roughly translates into Demon's Tears. And that's a pretty appropriate title because this game. Has a pretty heavy sense of sadness about it. And when I was talking about the kind of the thematic point of similarity between Tokyo RPG Factory's titles earlier, that's what I was really talking about. They,、um, they all share this kind of this, this sense of sadness. And it's not something that we haven't seen attempted in RPGs before, but I think that this kind of melancholia that Tokyo RPG Factory aims for is, is done better. Better by these guys than pretty much any other developer has ever managed to because it is just so central to everything in these games. Every moment of every one of Tokyo RPG Factory's games is just drenched in this melancholia, and it's quite beautiful and it's quite intense. And it really gives these games such a distinctive feel that makes them much more than the kind of retro themed RPGs that a lot of people kind of chalk RPG, Tokyo RPG Factory up for. So you look at the way that these play, and they seem like they're kind of retro throwbacks. I Am Setsuna and Lost Sphere were kind of turn based from that you know, Super NES era kind of style of turn based RPG. This one's more action based. But still, you can look at it and say, well, this is maybe their attempt to do something like Secret of Mana ish.、Um, so there is that retro theme about feel about how the games play. But in terms of the storytelling, it is very modern and it is very mature and it is, it's a lot more intelligent than I think people give it credit for. And even within the context of this relatively short demo that we got a chance to play this week, 
that is very clear about this. This is a game that I'm really looking forward to now. I was already looking forward to it, but I'm really, really looking forward to it now because I know that the narrative of this thing is going to be quite powerful. Now, I'm being pretty specific when I say melancholia rather than sadness because they are two different things, though they mean approximately the same thing in English. Uh, melancholia has a very different feel about it. It's a very different and very specific type of sadness, which is not the sadness that we generally write about or talk about or film or make games about uh, in a modern context. You know, we, we generally have a, a more shallow understanding, I think, of, sh of sadness in modern storytelling. And melancholia is more a, it's kind of an uh, antique or an antiquated approach to sadness. And something that I studied quite a bit uh, back at school with the poems of, um, of T.S. Eliot and uh, Edgar Allan Poe, who his poems were not really, <laughs> they were not really the horror that his stories were. His poems were very kind of melancholic, like uh, Annabelle Lee and all of that kind of stuff. So melancholia is a kind of, it's a poetic sadness, I think, is probably the best way to, to describe it. It has a, a lyricism about it, a beauty about it, which kind of transcends the raw feeling of sadness. And it's hard to do that <laughs> for obvious reasons. It's not easy to make sadness beautiful. But these developers at Tokyo RPG Factory certainly make that their goal. And this game, Oni Naki, is it's so obsessed with death as a theme as well that it's hard not to talk about it with you know without having that that sense of sadness about it. So the basic premise of the game, at least as far as I can tell, or as far as this demo kind of takes us, is that the the world is basically uh, very kind of buddhist inspired where reincarnation is a thing so after you die you come back but if people feel regret or they feel angst about your death and if they're too miserable miserable about it um you don't come back you get kind of trapped in the other world so people put on this kind of this happy air about death and they try to remember it in very positive terms and the whole of society has kind of formed around that idea where death is not something to to kind of uh, to feel too sad about. And so we have all these cults pop, popping up where people are willingly dying or, you know, if 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 a mother and a father lose their son, then death is something that they kind of they almost uh, they almost welcome. So it's. It's a very foreign idea to death, I think, to to what we're used to. Um, and then you play as a character whose job is basically to help people with that transition from one world to the next. And you can actually jump in and out of the worlds too. You kind of go to the underworld where you can fight ghostly things and talk to ghostly things. And then you're back in the real world where you talk to real people as well and you tr uh, seamlessly transition in and out of them. So there's that. And... All of these things come together to create death as a kind of central motif, but not death in the sense of a, a kind of a misery. It's it's melancholic, like I said. It's it's different and it's fascinating. I'm I, I still obviously have a long way to go to really piece together what the game's saying about all of its themes because it's a demo and therefore you don't really get a sense beyond the very superficial, uh, you know, the setup of the game. So there's still more to go before I can really start to analyze what this game's about. But I'm certainly intrigued because it is different and just like I Am Setsuna was very different with the way it handled its themes and that idea of the sacrifice. You know, if you compared I Am Setsuna to Final Fantasy X, both of which have a very similar premise, the way that the two games handle those is very different because of the way that the game treats the, the core kind of emotion of sadness. So yeah, this one I think is going to be very distinct and very original and I think it's going to be very creative and... It's intense. I'm not sure if people will appreciate it on that grounds because it does have a very intense focus on death. But assuming that you can appreciate the, the narrative purpose for that, then I think you're going to really get along with this one. I want to, of course, also mention that the game plays really well. It's a very smooth kind of action RPG thing. Like I said earlier, it reminds me a little bit of Secret of Mana. It feels like this is Tokyo RPG's factory's attempt to do a homage to Secret of Mana in some ways. And it really works. I really enjoy that. It has, it has some really interesting characters. It's got a beautiful, hauntingly beautiful soundtrack 
uh, Tokyo RPG Factory's games have always had lovely soundtracks. This one takes it up to another level entirely. This is a CD soundtrack that I'm actually going to try and you know uh, acquire as a CD because it is that kind of beautiful music, and it's visually it's a it's a step up from what they've done previously. It has all these kind of close ins, which were frequent infrequent sorry infrequent in the previous games. This one is a much more I think mature and confident game, and the developers have this art style that's distinct and unique, and they really know how to show it off this time around. So in general, this game is definitely a third outing for a development team and it's it's hard to it's it's easy to forget that Tokyo RPG Factory is still very new this is only the third game and they've only been creating games for what a, a generation of consoles so for them to be creating something that is this intriguing and this appealing is really impressive and I cannot wait to play the full game and you know, kudos to Square Enix for backing them over and over again. The previous two titles haven't necessarily been, you know, uh, mind-bending, mind-blowing in terms of sales figures or critical response, but they keep backing them, and I think that this one, I really have high hopes that this one will kind of get Tokyo RPG Factory over the line, and it will be regarded as a top-tier developer after this. So thanks very much for watching this video. Try out the demo, it's free, like I said, and uh, yeah, looking forward to hearing your thoughts about it once you've had a chance to play it. Thank you for watching.